Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart and welcome to a brief overview video for the new factions for Total War Rome 2. Now the first faction we'll be looking at is the RDI tribe. So they are a promise of loot, so they have minus 50% mercenary recruitment costs. They have rapid campaigns, so you get plus 50% mercenary upkeep costs. Um, it says by here they established themselves as pirates along the Adriatic coast and as far east as Apollonia, sweeping away the culture complexes of the Neolithic Balkans as the Bronze Age dawned, largely remaining distinct from the Illyrian and Greek neighbours. The Thracian, Getai and Odrysians were so powerful that the Greeks feared their descent, their descent from the north to destroy civilizations. Tylus were Celts who settled in northern Thrace following Brennus failed invasion of Greece in the 4th century BC. So some of the stats they have Pirates, they get plus 200% income from raiding, so they're a good faction to raid with. They have neglected land, so minus 20% wealth from agricultural buildings. That's kind of a defect they have. And then they get plus one recruitment slots at all ports. So I'm going to put this on very hard, it's ready there. And we're going to start campaign. I'm on my aim to show you in this brief overview video is the opening turns to the RDI tribe just to see where they start what they are what their units can what units they can recruit sorry and whether I think they're a good faction to play a campaign with or not that's what I hope to establish and I'm gonna cut this out actually and go straight to the campaign so I shall see you all on the campaign map okay so welcome back guys so objective issued completely control two provinces either by direct ownership or through military allies and you will get 2500 in the treasury as a reward for this mission so we're going to click off that and this so this is where we start we start in Epidamnos we have a ship called the Raiders of the, the Sea tribe. we have two raiding Hemiolia and one Admiral which is a this is actually a Scorpion Triers we can actually expand the city straight away. The Wrath of Armatus. We have two units of slave slingers. I don't know what the difference is between the slave slingers and the regular slingers, whether there is difference at all. These are the mercenaries, so they got mercenary Illyrian cavalry. They have mercenary Molossian dogs, same as Epirus. They have mercenary Illyrian raiders, mercenary coastal levies, mercenary Illyrian raiders, Illyrian cavalry, and some coastal levies. And this army also has a general, has Illyrian cavalry and Illyrian spearmen. So let's have a quick look at the technology. This should probably be the same as... Yeah, it's exactly the same technology as every other faction in the game. Uh, diplomacy. Let's see, who, do we start off at war? Oh, no, we don't. We do have the Dalmatai who are... Or the Delmatai, sorry, in the north of Illyria. They actually don't like us because of trespasses against Delmatai and military actions against Delmatai. So, they're unfriendly. So a good war target probably to go for would be Delmatai to begin with. Uh, Darosi, in the middle of Illyria here, they share the same blood cell as Delmatai. So if you can conquer them, both those regions, it would be a good place to start, I, I suspect, in this campaign. We also have Epirus just to the south of us, could probably raid down there. Etruscan League, across the water over here. They're neutral, so they're probably be good, a good faction to trade with early on. Macedon down here, the same with Epirus really, go down there raiding, trying to take land from Macedonia. Rome probably, want to stay on Rome's good side. Really, whoever wins between the Etruscans and Rome, you want to be trading with. Um, Tribali, you actually trade in with Tribali straight away, which are over here, so land trade. Not much value though. And then the Veneti in the north, which are neutral as well, but we can't trade with them because there's no trade route. So that's what diplomacy looks like. Now off the bat, look at this. The Daosi are actually suffering attrition, which is a bit odd on the first turn. I don't know whether that's been edited in, added in with a DLC, or whether it's always been like that. And yeah, let's have a quick look at the family. So the Ardian dynasty has 80%. 96 out of 120 court nobles and the other families then has 20% We can have two armies and one fleet So not much to begin with and of course we have the one trade partner as well. We already have a champion So let's, let's find out the champion. Ah there he is. He's up here Verzo. 
So we have a, tramp a champion, so the best thing to do probably would be to use the champion as best as we can. It doesn't have very good abilities. Assault Patrol? Give that a go just to see what it does in this opening, opening phase of the campaign. Opportune failure. Okay. Ship. Bring the ship up as well. We'll expand the city and we will have some... Ooh, what do we have? Let's have some enclosed land for food. Yeah, can't go wrong with food. We'll upgrade all of these as well. We'll do some supply foraging to begin with and I'll click end turn. I'm only going to do the first turn. Just do the end of this first turn and then that'll be my brief overview of this faction. Just wanted to have a quick look to see what they're like, what sort of units are available at the start from the first turn, who they're at war with and what abilities they have. I'll also be doing the same for the other factions in this DLC, plus the free LC faction, Getai. Okay, nothing happened there, apart from war declared between Rome and Epirus, that's interesting. So, that's pretty much all I want to look for at this in this video, this brief overview. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll bring you the Getai next. I've been Dragonheart, thank you for watching, until next time, goodbye.